What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the For the Good podcast. We're so glad you're here. Our mission is to reach the next generation by encouraging you using God's word. We cover topics like Christian dating. God does not want someone to come to him because of a person. Finding your godly spouse. That's how God works in relationships. Mm -hmm. Following God's will for your life. We think that we should be omniscient with God and staying close to God when the world tempts you. Or it can be worshiping the right God in the wrong way. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This podcast is for God's good and to grow his kingdom. Our prayer is that this ministry provides you with a healthy Christian community that you can be a part of. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the For the Good podcast. Podcast. Yep. What's up, honey? <laughs> How you doing? Good. We doing good. Uh. <laughs> what? Every time we do this, I always think back to that time where you were you, when you did the introduction, and then you said, "Okay, go ahead. It's hard, isn't it?" <laughs> yeah, it is. Because <laughs> I don't know what to say. I guess I'll start off by saying. Welcome to For the Good Podcast, Shorter Episodes Edition. Yeah. So um, Michelle and I have been doing some reflecting, and we want to make these episodes like a commute mm -hmm. instead of y'all going back to watch it, because if the episode's over 30 minutes, you're probably not going to sit down and watch the episode in one go around, mm -hmm. and we feel like we can get a good episode out for 25 to 30 minutes. And that's usually what it takes for people to, you know, drive to work or drive to work and then back. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, and we want to do more like conversational and less like preachy. I mean, yeah. they'll get preachy. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's just <laughs> inevitable, yeah. but we want it to be like a more casual conversation where we just come in here and sit down and just mm -hmm. talk. Yeah. So. so shout out all the listeners, watchers on YouTube. Um, thank you all for donations and supporting us and whatnot. Uh, updates uh, on Michelle. We have 12 weeks left until the baby's going to come and coaching is still live. Michelle and I don't really promote it that much. Um, we are in a season of like, we don't want to be too overwhelmed by the time the baby gets here. That's at least my mindset with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are still accepting clients. I don't know how many more, but if that interests you, if you want to be coached by Michelle and I fitness wise, um, the application is down below in the description, or you can go to better than before brand.com. That is www .better than before brand dot com. Pick up the application there. Sign. All right, I'm done. This is not an ad. <laughs> this is not an ad podcast, man. We do this completely for free. Yeah. Um, no, I, I do. I want to add this because this just got put on my heart just now. And I, I just feel like I need to say something. Okay. Okay. So about the coaching, I, I'm pretty sure most of my clients listen or watch the podcast. And I just want to give a shout out to them because... Coaching is so much fun. You guys, we don't do it to like chase a bunch of money and have a bunch of fulfillment. We coach people that genuinely need our help um, getting started and or like furthering their experience in the gym. And I just love all my girls. So shout out to all my girls. They're fantastic. I was talking to Asher yesterday just about like the progress of a lot of them. And it's just amazing to see. Mm -hmm. So yeah shout out to my to my clients <laughs> yeah and that kind of leads us into today's topic which sure. is can god use everyone yes and uh well first off i i don't know why but this kind of came up so i want to read something in first corinthians real quick this bible is really cool my wife put tabs on it and <laughs> It's pretty cool, man. I can't even lie he, to you. He has inherited my apologetics Bible. Yes, it is pretty cool. Um, let's see here. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter... Uh, is it 12? I also apologize if anyone can hear me breathing. It's getting harder to breathe. Yes, <laughs> it is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, so first, I want to talk a little bit about gifts to begin with. 
So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 4. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the performing of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. One and the same Spirit is active in all of these, distributing to each person as he wills. Um, first off, I just want to say, Paul, um, he's good at run-on sentences, just to let you all know. Mm-hmm. Run-on sentences, well, sentences weren't really a thing back in the day people would write letters. Was that one of the ones where he didn't write it? Someone wrote it for him while he talked? Maybe. Well, I know a couple of his letters are like yeah. that, and I think that's why they're like that. Yeah. Is just because he was just talking, and yeah. the person was just yeah. Write that down. Write yeah. that down. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's the, good. Let's get that. The SpongeBob meme. Yeah. Um, so first off, I just want to say that all of us do have different gifts. Mm-hmm. We just need to figure out which gift is given to you. Um, so, and also, I like how earlier in that it said that everyone's ministry is different, but it's driven by the same Lord, Mm -hmm. you know? So this is something that I've been doing a lot recently. Um, Those of y'all that are in the new Discord and on Twitch and stuff like that, I recently started a gaming ministry, and it's still led by Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's different from someone that is running a church, sure, but I'm still reaching the lost in that area, and um, God still uses me. You know, I, I believe I have... Um, the gift of wisdom and knowledge and being able to evangelize. And I wouldn't be doing God any type of service if I were to sit on my butt and do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, if he gave me these gifts, then you need to utilize them. Mm-hmm. I know it's hard, you know, walking into the gifts that God gave you, but that's where the fulfillment's going to come from. Yeah. You can't force your gift if you don't yeah. have it. Yeah. You know, if you're not called to preach, mm-hmm. don't do it. Because mm-hmm. it, it's it it's going to be a waste of your time. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. There's going to be better preachers out there. And also, I, I want to say one more thing, too. Um, mini- if you're going into ministry because you think it's a flashy thing to do or you think it's a trendy thing to do, ministry's not for you. Mm-hmm. Ministry is not a flashy or trendy thing to do. Yeah. I find that very weird. It feels yeah. like everyone has a ministry now. Mm-hmm. And uh, some well, people, some, yeah. well, I'm just saying like on, on the, on the, like the, I guess like evangelism side yeah. and preaching side, like not everyone is called to preach. Yeah. You know, yeah. that may not, that may not be your goal here. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a little bit off topic where we're going from, but I wanted to start this as a foundation is everyone does have a gift. You just need yeah. to discern which gift is for you. Yeah. No, I'm really glad that you started off reading that because <clears throat> I feel like it also goes on to the point where it's like, God will use everyone. Mm-hmm. Like there's no like, qualifications that we have to have right and everyone has different gifts i feel like a lot of times people will get like discouraged almost if they can't do certain things listed that you just read off Mm -hmm. but it's like that has nothing to do with your salvation or your relationship with jesus you know um for a while i was friends with someone that went to a uh, pentecostal church and they believe that everyone there can speak in tongues mm-hmm. or the majority of the congregation. And just having a conversation with him, I was like, I don't, I don't understand how, like how that works because you're, you're making the people that can't feel left out yeah. and like they're missing out on something, mm-hmm. you know? So we all have different gifts of the spirit and he equipped us and he will equip us with all of those different gifts. Mm-hmm. It's not our job to sit around and be like going down the checklist and trying all of them. Yeah. Like he'll make it apparent. To yeah. You, he makes it very you know? obvious. And 
it doesn't matter what you're doing. Anything can be a ministry. So I know you said like a lot of people will try to go into ministry. I think you meant like literal, literal ministry. Yeah. I, I meant like literally going yeah. to be a pastor or right. something like that. Like, please go into, you know, pastoring a church or yeah. being an evangelist if God's actually called you there. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can use anything as your ministry. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. We were talking about this last night in Bible study. One of the girls works for Lyft when she's not doing her day job. Oh, nice. And she's like, it's great because on, especially on Tuesday, she'll leave and she'll go do a couple rides just to get a little bit of extra money in the evening. And she's like, I left here last week feeling just like on fire for the Lord. So the second she got in the car with a stranger, she was like wanting to share the gospel, you yeah. know? And I, she was like kind of making jokes about it and saying that it was like a little ridiculous that she did that. And I said, not at all. Yeah. I was like, that could be your ministry, right? Yeah. Like they're in a car with you for who knows how long they can't go anywhere. They're going to hear what you're going to have to say, yeah. you know? And it's, I was like, use that as a ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, you started streaming, you go online and you play games with people once one day a week. Majority of the time, it's just people watching you play games, but you have conversations with people in the chat, mm -hmm. whether they're believers or non-believers. Yeah. And it's like, that's a ministry. Yeah. You know, like we all... We all have access to lost people. Mm -hmm. That's like really when I what I want to hone in on in this episode because I I feel like there are a lot of people who feel like they need to start a church or start an online ministry or you know start a podcast or yeah. like just do something and I fall in this rut too where I'm like I feel like I need to do this like I'm still working corporate and I'm like I don't feel like I'm making a difference and it's like why do I feel that way mm -hmm. you know like this is where God placed me right now in this moment. How can I use where I'm at to spread his good news and allow him to use me? Mm -hmm. You know, like it can be in anything. Yeah. And um, also about about the qualification uh, spectrum. Um, if we're talking about the qualification of being perfect, uh -huh. then uh, God wouldn't use anyone. No. So... You can read through... Actually, we'll take Paul, for example. Yeah. So in Acts chapter... Uh, I think it's Acts chapter 9, Paul converts to be a Christian after... I think it's Peter uh, shares with him the good news. Mm -hmm. And chapters before this, Paul was persecuting Christians. Yeah. I don't know if you'll understand this. Paul was killing Christians. Christians mm -hmm. because of their faith mm -hmm. and Jesus still used him. Mm -hmm. So Jesus's followers were being killed by the person that Jesus potentially used the most in the new Testament. Yeah. So the whole spectrum of, Oh, I'm not perfect. God can't use me. Nobody in the 66 books written in the Bible is it perfection? Yeah, no. I'm excluding Jesus, obviously. Mm -hmm. But a big reason why Jesus uses imperfect people is because that gives evidence to why we need a savior. Mm -hmm. So you're able to explain to people, hey, I'm not very good in this area. That's why I lean on the one who is perfect. Yeah, yeah. So it's the whole like, I need to be perfect to be qualified to start xyz or mm -hmm. you know do whatever or spread the good news that's that's not how it works that's why it's called good news mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. because you don't have to be perfect to accept or let me say it like this to receive the gift that god gave you yeah. that's why it's called good news it would yeah. just be news yeah if we had to work to get it yeah hey you want to spend eternity uh with god well you got to do this 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 yeah that's just news people the yeah. reason the reason why it's so good is because it's a it's a receiving of the gift that god gave us mm -hmm. you know i like to use examples of you and i receiving baby presents or um wedding gifts or whatever mm -hmm. you know if we had to buy that said gift would it really be a gift mm-hmm 
No, it would be something that we bought. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The reason why it makes it a gift is because we received it. We didn't have to pay for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So go ahead, honey. Yeah. So like we can even go back to the Old Testament, right? And just look at Jesus's lineage, lineage and like where he came from and all of the people that were used in that whole entire line. What? Yeah. You said lineage. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> lineage lineage is yeah. that what it, how you say lineage, it? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. okay no but if you go back through and you look at all of those people like they were all so broken so messed up bro we had a we had a conversation last night a bible study about king solomon <laughs> homie this dude had <laughs> 700 plus wives <laughs> concubines yeah i think is what they called it. yeah <laughs> this man was sleeping with 700 women well it, yeah <laughs> I don't even know how that works. But. Dude, check this out. He wrote about the Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah. <laughs> God still used him. But hey, I'll tell you one thing. I would listen to him because he's been around the block. Yeah, I was going to say. He knows a thing or two about women. So <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, even though he messed up, God still used him in that in that area. It took him 700 to figure out what a Proverbs 31 was. Yeah. But yeah. And, I'll, and I'll tell you what, dude, a woman reads that and they're like facts. Yeah. They don't disagree with it. Yeah. What's funny is that's a lot really of people good. don't understand that King Solomon was the writer of Proverbs. Mm-hmm. They don't know his history. Mm-hmm. If they would know King Solomon's history, mm-hmm. they would be like, wait a second. This man's kind of terrible. Yeah, I yeah. can't believe this book was written. Uh-huh. And that's just a testimony, man. God yeah. doesn't use perfect people. Quick interruption before we get back to the show. Guys, we just want to let you know that our coaching services are live. So if you've been struggling with your fitness journey and you are looking to get in shape or maybe just struggle in that area, we are there to help you. We offer personalized workout plans through a private app, constant communication with us, and also a personalized nutrition plan with recipes. There are over a thousand to choose from on there. So if you have been struggling and want our help, uh, please reach out to us or visit the website, which is better than before brand.com to uh, see some testimonials and also fill out an application so that we can reach out to you and schedule a call. Thank you guys. And let's get back to the show. I am going to say just a disclaimer. I feel like this is kind of obvious, but I feel like I need to say this. Um, saying that Jesus is using people that broken for like him, for example, does not mean that we can go out and be crazy. Yeah. Um, I just want to clarify that. Yeah. Like it doesn't take you being a bad person for Jesus to use you. Mm -hmm. And it also doesn't take you being a perfect person for Jesus to use you. He's going to use you no matter what. But for the people that have actually had a story and a history like most of the people in the Bible did, where they were like a wreck and then complete 180 after they gave their lives to Jesus. Yeah. Or in the Old Testament, just like surrendered you know Mm -hmm. to god's will um like you have an upper hand on people who have been following the lord since they were kids Mm -hmm. like in a sense you do because if i'm a broken person and i hear someone's story well my parents raised me in the church i was super blessed i'm not discounting that testimony i pray that macy has a testimony like that truly i pray that she when she's young, decides to give her life to Jesus and she never has to go through anything that we went through. Mm -hmm. Like that is my biggest prayer. I pray that that's her testimony. Yeah. But I am saying for the people who have gone through a lot and finally given their lives to Jesus and experienced that 180 change where you just completely go against how you were before, that is the story that's going to help lost people. Yeah. Yeah. They're in a situation either that you used to be in or that like maybe you don't you don't have the exact things in common, right? So like maybe someone's struggling with some sort of addiction and you were never addicted to anything, but you had like mental illness struggles, mm-hmm. right? It's like that's still going to be a powerful testimony yeah. because everyone struggles with that nowadays, yeah. right? So it's like that that's that's your ministry yeah. is to share your testimony and explain like this is how my life used to be yeah. and this is how it is now. 
And it's not necessarily sitting down and getting heart to heart with someone. If you're comfortable doing that, fantastic, please do it. But it could also just be you showing the fruit, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be evident that there's been a change in your life Mm -hmm. based on how you're living. Yeah. And also we use extreme examples, you know, David, King Solomon in the Old Testament, Samuel, Um, like those are extreme examples, but he also used people, Paul, Mm -hmm. but he also used people like Peter Mm -hmm. and Peter was fine. Yeah. He was a nobody. He was just a fisherman, you know? So maybe you're watching this or listening to this and you're like, well, I'm a nobody. I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, I think what's really cool about the Bible is it showcases how people are being used and of of all walks of life. Yeah. From very extreme to just an average Joe like Peter. If you want to talk about an average person, do a little bit of research of who Peter was before he started following Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was a nobody. Mm -hmm. He just did his work. He fished and then he went to bed, you know, and it feels like that's a lot of Americans. Yeah. You know, they go to work they come home Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. you may have a struggles here and there whatever it may be but maybe you're just the average show god still wants to use you yeah in some way shape or form and honestly i'll be i'll be honest too um you probably already have you don't even have to listen to this episode you probably already have that pull Mm -hmm. about what you need to do you just haven't stepped into it and most of the time the pull that you're getting is the gift that god wants you to step into but the reason why you're not stepping into it is just because it's very uncomfortable and it's very unfamiliar waters. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you guys, when y'all step into that gift, a lot of times God wants you to step into that gift because that's when you're actually going to lean on God for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what happened with me. You know, me starting this gaming ministry and stuff like that. Um, I would say I lean on God more than more than ever in this and you know when you're doing something that you don't know if it's from god there's no point to lean on god for it because it's not led by god yeah so um that's all i got to say on the matter that was a really good point um i think a lot of times people will stay where they're at and try to do like work for him Mm -hmm. but when you get called to those uncomfortable places i feel like that's when you're quote unquote ministry actually takes like another huge leap forward, Mm -hmm. you know, because you're not, it's not something that you can do by yourself. Yeah. You have, you have to rely on him to do it. And I think a lot of times people will say like, that's how I knew God was calling me to it because it was so uncomfortable. Um, I would, I wouldn't like look out for things that are uncomfortable yeah, and like yeah, purposely do yeah, them. That's just, a really good point. Just because someone has said that. Yeah, it's a really good point. <laughs> but when you get to a point where you're like, I feel like the Lord's calling me to this, but I don't understand why because it's so uncomfortable. That's when I, that's when I would give you the green light. Yeah. Like go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, your ministry is not determined by other people and what they say on the internet. Correct. People take yeah. it way out of context. They'll yeah. listen to a clip on the internet and be like, oh, well, this guy said this, so this has to be God. No, bro. Yeah. Like, social media is wild. Yeah. Like, just because that clip got put on your timeline doesn't mean that it's God, man. Like, I don't, I'll, I'll be honest. Yes. I, I don't understand that. People are like, dude, that clip spoke to me. Like, I yeah. think that's God. And it's like, well, I guess it could be, but... You no, know, that's, don't, that's, don't, don't over spiritualize it. Exactly. Like, that's definitely happened. Like, especially to me, like I've seen something where I'm like, the Lord's been giving me a message and then that just like confirmed it. It's yeah. not like, it's yeah. not like I see it and I'm like, wait, maybe this is from the Lord. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's very clear, but I do feel like people do sp- over spiritualize things. Yeah. Yeah. I also just want to give encouragement to the people that like don't necessarily have the confidence to share their faith because that was me. Like when I first came my life to Jesus, I was like terrified that people were going to question me about things that I wasn't going to have the answers to. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that just comes with maturity in your walk. It's okay to tell someone that you don't know and that you don't have an answer and that you can come back to them. Um, 
a great resource would be any any apologetics book as well. Just that's just the defense of the of the faith is to just do more research on like why you actually believe what you believe. Um, cause it strengthened my faith by reading certain mm-hmm. books, like more than a carpenter was one. Um, more than a was, carpenter, mere Christianity, cold case Christianity. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist stealing from now. God. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> um, is God a moral monster? Is God a bully? There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> Just look up apologetics yeah. um, and and read some stuff about that because it'll help. But I just I want to touch a, on a verse where Jesus is um, telling his followers that like when you when you encounter people that are going to come against you, like the Holy Spirit will guide you and what to say because this has actually happened to me before. I've experienced it before where I've like. I've literally started sweating because I'm like, what am I going to say? Mm-hmm. And then like he just gives me the words to say. Or even if it's not someone that's coming against you, even if it's just in a conversation. Last night, words were flying out of my mouth at Bible study. And as soon as I was done, I like I almost blacked out. I was like, wait, what did I just say? Yeah. But it to the girl that I was talking to, it helped her so much. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, what just happened? I don't even... I don't even, like, I couldn't even sit there and tell you what I said. Yeah. But, like, whatever it was, she needed to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but I'll, like, I'll oh, snap yeah. out of it and be like, whoa. Um, so, this is Luke 12, verses 11 and 12. Um, Whenever they bring you before synagogues and rulers and authorities, don't worry about how you should defend yourself or what you should say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what must be said. And a lot of times, I was talking to Asher about this last night, a lot of times it's not us defending or answering a question. A lot of times it's us directing what they're focused on, Mm -hmm. right? So I gave him the example of the Samaritan woman at the well because that's what we talked about last night. And after Jesus told her that like she could have living water, you know, and like she was searching for fulfillment and things that weren't going to fulfill her. Her one of her questions was talking about where to worship because she said that the Jews worship in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And if you go back and read Jesus' response, he doesn't correct her or help her out with an answer. She directs he directs her focus on what she's supposed to be focused on. Yeah. Like he's like, it doesn't matter. Like what matters is how you're worshiping me. Or like if you're worshiping me, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters your heart posture mm-hmm. behind it and like what you're supposed to be focused on, yeah. right? So a lot of times it could just be you responding to someone being like, hey, you know what? I don't, I don't have the answer to that question, but I will say that my faith is really strong because of what's happened in my life and then go into your testimony, yeah. you know? Um, and sometimes it might not be a verbal conversation about Jesus. It could just be the way that you show love towards them and the way that you care for them. Like don't over spiritualize it and think that you need to like walk around with a sign that says like Jesus saves, ask me about my testimony or something like just show love to people. Like they're going to notice a difference. I bragged about you last night, honey. Um, and I was, because we were talking about like sharing love and Mm -hmm. like just being like that light in people's life. And I said, that's one thing that I love so much about my husband is that no matter where he goes, he shows so much love towards people to the point where like some people might think he's being sarcastic, but he's being totally serious. Oh, oh, honey. People think I'm very weird. (laughs) No. (laughs) Seriously. Like I'll catch, like, I remember when I first came to see you. People are like, is this dude like a schizophrenic? What's going on? (laughs) When I first came to see you in Houston, I was like, oh, this is just like a front, you know? Cause like we had just started dating and I was like, he's just trying to impress me. Cause we would go to Kroger to get food to cook and you'd be like, oh, thank you so much. You have such a good day. And I was just like, wait, is this guy like actually this nice? Like I was genuinely confused. Mm -hmm. Um, But now being married to you for six months and and being with you for over a year, like that's just genuinely your character. Like we still to this day can go to Kroger and you will talk to someone the exact same way. Yeah. But, I'm like, have a nice day. I really, really enjoyed your service. And they're like over there on the front, like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, like, no, I'm being serious. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because someone coming from Ohio, like we don't experience that. 
like yeah. at all. So like when I went to Texas and like just saw your kindness and like other people's kindness that they were showing you, I was like, dang, this is crazy. But like, yeah, Ohio sucks. <laughs> people are just very sad. Yeah. <laughs> and shout like, out, shout out my Ohioans. Yeah. No, I, I love the state. So glad I was raised there. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> <laughs> it made me who I am. Okay, yeah. I would not take it back for a second. But um, anyways, back on topic. Um, I think a lot of times it's not necessarily the words that we're saying. It's the actions, right? How do we show love? Mm -hmm. Because I can sit here and tell you that I love you so much every single day, all day long. But you're not going to believe it until I show you how I love you. Yeah. Right? Like Correct, yeah. How How would the Bible be? If we read words from Jesus and he was like, I love you so much, accept me, it was all words. And there was no cross, there was no death for our sins, there was no resurrection. It would be really, really, really hard to put my faith in something like that. Well, yeah, that's what would make it a legend. Yes. Christianity is only true because of the resurrection. Exactly. But there is action there, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, yeah. So go out and show people action and love mm -hmm. and like spread the gospel in that way. And if they ask like, you know, how do you have so much joy? Yeah. Tell them why. Yeah. You know, like that opens the gate for you to have a conversation about Jesus and your story and how they can accept him and experience that same type of freedom. Mm -hmm. So don't be discouraged if you are working a nine to five job and or you're in school or like whatever it is. And you're like, oh, I don't have a ministry. I feel like I'm just not doing the Lord's work. It's like, don't over spiritualize it. It's you can do the work for Jesus no matter where you're at, mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing. If you're a stay at home mom and all you do is take care of kids. Get it, girl. Great. Find ways to be involved with your kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, and spread the gospel. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Yeah. Yep. And uh, hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all have an episode topic that y'all want us to cover, please DM us or leave it in yeah. the comments down below. Maybe we'll do that for next episode. Maybe we'll so, put a poll or something up. Yeah. For the listeners, um, since you can't see anything on YouTube, I would encourage you to, if you're not already, follow our Instagram page for the ministry. Um, it's in the description of every single episode. So just go on there, follow us, send us a message on there about something that you'd like to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, let us know what we should put on our walls. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we love you guys. Catch y'all next Wednesday on the tripod. <laughs>